One of the most well-known parasites in nature is the Cordyceps fungus, which basically mind controls insects. There are actually hundreds of different variations of this fungus, which usually affect only one species, though some can affect multiple. You really only see them control anthropods, so spiders, locusts, beetles, and most well-known, ants. A very famous scene from the Planet Earth series explores how this fungus operates, and it goes as follows. A bullet ant is infected by the spores of the cordyceps fungus. Once that happens, the ant is fully under the control of the fungus, and will start to move further and further away from its colony. The ant will move upwards, and attach its mandibles to the branch of a tree or stem of another plant. The fungus will then sprout from the top of the ant's head, killing it and allowing for more spores to affect those below it. The fungus is so virulent, it can wipe out whole colonies of ants. And it's not just ants that fall victim to this killer. The other ants are aware of this, and actively try to get rid of ants with visible symptoms. This would go on to inspire the incredibly popular franchise The Last of Us, in which a similarly named fungus infects humans and turns them into zombies. The actual cordyceps fungus can't infect mammals, but the general idea of it is still horrifying. Piggybacking off the idea of anthropods being affected by parasites, there is a species of wasp that will use spiders to lay their eggs. How this works is that the wasp will sting the abdomen of the spider, not only injecting its eggs, but also inserting a hormone called ectosone. This will cause the spider to build more and more unique webs that acts as a cocoon for the larvae. Once the larvae hatch, they will inject more ectosone into the spider, making it think it's time to molt. Eventually, they eat the spider from the inside out and leave as adult wasps. Now, scientists are still trying to gather more information on how this all works, in order to gather more precise detail. But, yeah, the species of wasp basically takes over the mind of a spider, makes it the birthing place for its children, and gets eaten alive once it's finished its purpose. I'm sure we've all heard of rabies, a deadly virus which is nearly 100% fatal unless quickly treated. It only infects mammals, though can be easily spread through bites, scratches, or direct contact with wounds. The time it takes for symptoms to appear usually depends, though once they do, it means death is usually likely. In fact, a total of around 60,000 people die from it each year, mostly in third world countries. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, confusion, inability to control your body, and hydrophobia, as it will cause you to fear water, something you, you know, need to live. Dogs are the most common cause of humans catching rabies, and usually they get it from another mammal species. You can actually find loads of old footage from the 1950s, where doctors are trying to cure patients of notable symptoms of rabies. It's very clear how much pain they're in, the terror they must have felt, knowing they wouldn't survive for much longer. A fungus called the Massospora cicadina is known to inject cicadas as soon as they make their emergence, specifically the brood X nymphs, which only emerge from the soil every 17 years. The fungus's spores will make its way into the cicada's body, only showing up on their bodies a week later. This takes place as the insects molt into adults, where they attempt to breed before they die in three weeks. How their breeding works is that the males will flick their wings and produce noise, which will attract a female. If they mate, the spores will inject the females as well, basically acting as an STD. The male's genitals will then have fallen off, and the female's eggs won't get fertilized. If a female is infected, something similar will happen. What's most interesting about this fungus is that some infected males will flick their wings like females, causing the other males to try to mate with them and get infected as well. So essentially, they're putting spores in the soil to turn the frickin' cicadas gay. You legitimately have a fungus turning these bugs into sexual zombies, just to spread itself and start the whole process over again. Toxoplasmosis is a disease that's caused by the parasite Toxoplasma gondii, which can affect humans from either eating uncooked meat or handling cat feces. With the latter, it's caused by a complex version of the food cycle, where rats get infected by the disease first. It infects their brain and causes them to lose their fear of cats. Once that happens, it allows them to get eaten a lot easier, causing the parasite to infect the cats as well. 
They will then lie dormant through a process called oexist, where it can then infect food and water. This is where it becomes a danger to humans, especially those who are pregnant. Once inside the immune system, it can cause the disease toxoplasmosis. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit complex, but it all stems from a zombified rat allowing itself to get eaten to spread a disease up the food chain. Within deers, elk, and moose, the most common fear among them would be chronic wasting disease, or the zombie deer disease. Essentially, it causes these species' brains to degenerate, leading to an almost zombie-like state. Symptoms usually take a while to show up, but once they do, they decimate any deer it affects. It can be pretty easily spread from deer to deer, just through contaminated body tissue or fluids, or even indirectly. Symptoms include rapid weight loss, drooling, decrease in coordination and movement, excessive thirst or urination, and increased aggression. Most severe of all is that their fear of humans goes away, making it easier for hunters to kill them. Chronic wasting disease isn't known to kill humans, but we've only known about it since the late 1960s. A study from 2017 showed that the disease can affect macaques, which of course have similar genetics to humans. The fatality rate is 100%, and there aren't any known cures. In the U.S., it's been spreading from state to state, now reaching Florida. Stepping away from parasites and diseases, now we'll delve into cases where the dead actually came back to life. And yes, this has been successfully done, multiple times in fact. The 1940 short film, Experiments in the Revival of Organisms, showcases the arduous process scientists took to revive decapitated dog heads. It was conducted by Soviet scientists, though the film was dubbed in English years later. Led by Sergei Brokhanigo, the experiment began with separating the heart from the body of the dogs. An autojector was then used, which you will know by its more common name, the pump. Its pair of linear membrane pumps exchanged the oxygen in the dog's decapitated heads with a water reservoir, soon supplying them with oxygenated blood. The dogs then come back to life with the film even showing one reacting to external stimuli, even licking its own mouth. These dogs were kept alive for a report of seven hours, though the blood was eventually drained, triggering cardiac arrest. The film ends by showing the procedure being undone, and the dogs going back to their normal lives. Even back then, this was seen as inhumane, which is ironic because this took place in the Soviet Union. This experiment was actually replicated 65 years later in America, though this was not filmed. The research was posted in the Yearbook of Intensive Care and Emergency Medicine, which suggested that such treatments could work on humans, specifically in cases where people are hemorrhaging blood too quickly. All the blood in the dogs are flushed out and replaced with oxygen and sugar-filled saline. Three hours later, all the dogs were given a blood transfusion and some electric shock, which brought them back to life. They were all responsive, with one canine even regaining consciousness. For the most part, I've mainly been talking about cases relating to animals, but not really humans. There have been many cases of people coming back to life after a confirmed death, which usually stems from one condition. Called Lazarus Syndrome, this is where a person has a delayed response to CBR after dying due to cardiac arrest. Sometimes this happens after a few minutes, though in other, more extreme cases, a person will come back to life for hours. Since 1982, there have been around 40 cases of Lazarus Syndrome, though this seems to be underreported. In 2001, a 66-year-old man passed away during a surgery for an abdominal aneurysm. Ten minutes after CPR failed, doctors felt a pulse, meaning the CPR was successful after all. In 2014, a 78-year-old was found dead at his home, and legally declared so. The next day, after being moved to a funeral home, he was found moving. This was due to him having a defibrillator implanted in his chest, though even with this he died 15 days later. The longest it took for someone to come back to life was 17 hours, which occurred in 2008. This is when a 59-year-old woman had her heart stopped twice on the way to the hospital, where she was placed on life support, though this didn't seem to work. She was declared clinically dead. Funeral arrangements began, and after 17 hours, her life support was discontinued. Ten minutes after that, she managed to come back and made a full recovery. 